Yep, that should work just fine. Thanks for tuning in and welcome back to the shop. Let's get to answering some questions as to why I've built the roof this way and what we're going to put up here. Well, one thing is going to be for sure, there's going to be a lot of ladder up and down involved in this episode and I think it might be a little bit harder to film. Bottom line, what I'm looking to do up here is add the structure that's going to be the base for when we add all the solar panels. And as you may have noticed in the episode where we put the walls in, the edges of the roof stick up above the panel and that means I need to add some drainage. So the first thing I'm going to do is set this piece of 1010 T-slot in place. This gets pushed up against the outside lip, which is the outside lip on the wall. It's going to get glued and bolted in place. Originally I was thinking of just bonding it in place, but being that all of this roof uh, is going to be covered in solar panels basically, and all of those solar panels are going to be bolted to these, I go for a little bit more security and put some bolts through the side. That in itself seems simple, but it's not because I need to get the hole drilled from the outside in exactly the right place to line up with the T-slot on the inside. So, I've come up with a little jig. To start with, I reproduced the 1010 T-slot that I have in SketchUp. There are some you can download, but I want mine to be accurate to what I have. From here, I created an internal pattern for a part that fits inside the slots, and I'll use this for a bunch of different things. Next, I created a tail that comes up and over the side of the plate on the truck, and then I extruded this flat pattern into a 3D part that I can print. I imported the model into my slicing software to create the G-code, and then my Ender 3D printer took over and created the part out of PLA plastic in about half an hour. After printing it out, here's what we end up with. We've got the shape of the T-slot, and then it comes up, over, and down again, and on the side we have a hole that lines up exactly with the center of where the side groove would be on the T-slot. And basically, all I need to do at this point is get this in the right place, up against the side, and then slide that jig along here to all the places where I want the bolt and then mark it. I've actually made that jig the size of a center punch so I can just center punch then I can remove the T-slot and drill through. And if you weren't quite able to picture what I was saying there, this slides along in the T-slot and then on the outside gives me a marker of where to drill the hole. Now unfortunately at this time of year with the temperatures that we have, I don't feel safe bonding this in. So everything that I'm doing right now on the roof is just going to be dry fitting. I'll get all the holes drilled, I'll get everything lined up, but I'm not actually going to glue this together until the spring when things warm up a little bit. Now there are a few things that I need to consider before I go bolting this onto the roof. One, I need to be able to get nuts into the slots. Most T-slot nuts slide in from the end, though there are some that you can drop into the slot. The ones that I have are end insert. Now, because the metal of the roof wraps around the end, I don't have access to the end to slide the nuts in, which means I want to remove a section of the inboard edge so that I have a place where I can put them in the top or in the inboard face and slide them along. Now with that, I also want water to be able to get out, again, because the aluminum wraps around the end of the roof, the water can't escape out the end. So by removing this inboard section here on both ends and this section here at the bottom, any water that gets caught in the upper track can run out and any water that gets caught in the lower track can run out. The bottom track will be sealed and the outboard track will be sealed so I don't have to worry about them, but I do need to remove some of this so that I can get nuts in and water can get out. that's the shape that we end up with. So this is the top slot here and water can get out the end and this is the, the side slot and there's no lip there preventing the water from getting out. 
This also lets me get the nuts in and slide them along. So now I just got to repeat the same thing on the other end and we should be good to put this rail in. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clamp along the edge of the roof to hold the rail nice and tight to the outside edge and I'm also going to push down on it so it's tight to the roof. Once I have that sorted out I can slide this into place and I've got that marked on the top. I've got my center line and I've got an edge mark so I know exactly where to put it. And once I have that in place, I'll just set you over there. I can then take my center punch, go through this hole here and mark center. So I can do that all the way along the edge and then I'll remove the T-slot. Now that I've got them all center punched, I can go along with my quarter inch drill and drill all these out and they should line up exactly. Should. Oh, haha. <laughs> Before I do that, I should remove the T slot so I don't drill into it. I really want to make sure these holes go dead straight through because if I go on a bit of an angle or the drill wanders, be a problem later. Nice. I don't think that walked at all. Oh, I should have done a count of how many times I climb up and down this ladder in this video. I could have just put tally marks across the bottom of the screen. How do I keep setting myself up for left hand drilling? Done. Now realistically, that's about as far as I can go at this stage. Well, I could go further, but it wouldn't gain me anything. What I am going to do is I'm going to pop it back in place and maybe put one attachment at each end for the next step of what I'm doing up here. You may have caught in the last video when I was working on the slides underneath the kitchen, I had a couple of printed parts left over and these are for the roof. So the idea here is this piece which is a very, very thin bottom, gets mounted through this surface. And on the outside, there's a small trim ring that snaps into it. Now, this sticks through the surface. So what we end up with is a little drip lip. It's gonna be bigger than that, but it's hard to show. A little drip lip so that stuff doesn't run down the front of the truck, it actually pours away. That's the concept anyway. Now, how do I get this all lined up in the right place? Well, hopefully, this little jig with four center holes can take its place. I can center punch them, drill the first two from the inside, line it up again on the outside, drill the last two from the outside. Now, this hole doesn't need to be perfect. There is a flange that goes around it on both the inside and the outside, but the closer we get it, the better. Once the four holes are drilled, I'll cut through with a little buzz saw. So I basically end up with a rectangular round cornered hole and I've made the profile of the corner match my quarter inch bit. Actually it looks like it's gonna be easier to do three of them from the outside because the drill's just a little too close to the rail here. So. I'll just re-center punch these on this side. So these bottom ones are going to come through extremely close to the roof skin. So I've got to be really careful. I'm actually going to angle them up just a little bit at the end because it's easier to sand the hole back down again than it is to un undrill the roof. That should, fingers crossed, line up on the inside of that, and it does. So that means when I cut those four holes out, I can pop this through from the other side, and we should have a nice, clean looking roof drain. So 
that's the basic shape of the hole. Next thing I'm going to grab my little air sander and smooth everything out to the final fit. Well, it's all cleaned up. Let's see how it fits. I pop this in here. This just slides through. On the outside, the lip comes through. And then, it's just, hopefully that's capturing it. I take the outside trim ring and pop it on. There are a couple of little tabs around the outside of this so it should catch and kind of uh, they're probably impossible to see in this but um, it should catch on the trim ring and hold it in place so there we go we now have a roof drain that's flush with the roof just dry fit but eventually that'll be sealed in place gives a nice lip so that when the water runs out it's running away from the edge of the truck. Obviously that's all got to be siliconed in place, but I think you get the idea. I got to do three more of those and I got to prep the other rail. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider subscribing. Don't forget to check out the links in the video description, see all the stuff that I've used. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.